Today is May 25th, 2016. And those of you who have been following my videos realize that I have been talking a lot about Daniel 9, the 77s, and how the 62 sevens were fulfilled from the days of Zerubbabel when Zerubbabel made the call to, uh, to rebuild Jerusalem until Messiah was cut off. That was 62 weeks written in Daniel 9. And then there was the one week where Titus the Roman general for three and a half years The war against Judah and Jerusalem. And after three and a half years, once three and a half years was finished, the sacrifices and oblations had ceased, and the city and the temple were destroyed, fulfilling the one week of Daniel 9. There were only seven weeks left. And as in the days of Zerubbabel, as Jehovah pointed out to Haggai, in Haggai, Haggai 2, that Zerubbabel was supposed to be a sign for the time of the end. How? Zerubbabel made the call to rebuild Jerusalem. And from that day unto Messiah the Prince was 62 weeks. Or 62 sevens. 62 times 7, you can do the math. And so, as it was in the days of Zerubbabel, so it is today. June 7, 1967. Rabbi Shlomo Gorin made that same exact call. But there was not 62 weeks left. No, there is only seven weeks or seven sevens which is 49 years we are at the 49 years Shavuot has came and gone and the nations of the earth have done nothing to comply with Leviticus 25 I want to make sure everybody understands that the, the law specifically says, so I think it's 25 and verse 8. Okay? This is also a jubilee year. Mere coincidence? Hmm. I don't think so. And you shall number seven Sabbaths of years unto you. Seven times seven years, a space of seven Sabbaths of years shall be unto you forty-nine years. And then you shall cause the trumpet of the Jubilee to sound on the tenth day of the seventh month, that is in the forty-ninth year, on the Day of Atonement. Verse 10, And you shall make holy the fiftieth year. And proclaim liberty throughout all the land unto the inhabitants thereof. And it shall be a jubilee to you. And you shall return. Listen carefully, Gentiles. Your time is running out. Every man unto his possession. Yes, his possession. What is Israel's possession? Let me show you what Israel's possession is. Joshua 1. Now after the death of Moses, verse 1, 
the servant of Jehovah, it came to pass that Jehovah spoke unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, or Moses' servant. He said, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise and go to this Jordan, you and all this people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Now, all the nations of the earth, stop what you're doing and listen. Your lives depend on it. Verse 3. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that I have given to you. As I said unto Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, yes, Lebanon, belongs to Israel. Get used to it. Comply. Even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, half of Iraq belongs to Israel. Get used to it. You must comply. All the land of the Hittites. This was back around 1100 B.C. when Ye Jehovah spoke to Joshua these very words. Now, you rulers of the world need to go Google a map of the kingdom of the Hittites at 1100 B.C. and behold the land that belongs to Israel. Yes, nearly all of Turkey. Unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. All the western portion, all the way to the Mediterranean Sea. Yes. There shall not any man be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Now, I'll stop right there. Now, I almost forgot something. Verse 4, from the wilderness. That What wilderness? The wilderness that the Israelites had walked upon, which was the land of Goshen, the Sinai Peninsula, and the uppermost one-third to one-half of the Arabian Peninsula. They walked on. Now, do this world and comply. And Jehovah will show mercy. But if you don't do this and if you don't comply, you will be in violation of the everlasting covenant. And this will happen to you. And you cannot say you have not been told. Isaiah 24. Behold, Jehovah makes the earth empty and makes it waste and turns it upside down and scatters abroad the inhabitants thereof. And it shall be as with the people, so with the priest, so with the servant, so with the master, as with the maid, so with her mistress, as with the buyer, so with the seller, as with the lender, so with the borrower, as with the taker of usury, so with the giver of usury. The land will be utterly emptied and utterly spoiled, for Jehovah has spoken this word. The earth mourns and fadeth away. The world languishes and fades away. The haughty people of the earth do languish now. The earth is also defiled under the inhabitants thereof because they have transgressed the laws. That's the laws of nature they have. Just like in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah they have. They changed the ordinance and broke the everlasting covenant. What is the everlasting covenant? Once the 77s are fulfilled, the covenant between Jehovah and Israel is to begin immediately. Read Daniel 9 and you will see. 
any one or any nation that stands in the way, who stands between Jehovah and Israel from that point on, is in violation of the everlasting covenant. And this is the reason why these things will happen. As it says right here in Isaiah 24 and verse 5. I will continue. And also in verse 6. For this reason has the curse devoured the earth. For what reason? Because the inhabitants of the earth have stood in the way of the covenant between Jehovah and Israel. They are they that dwell therein are desolate, therefore the inhabitants of the earth are burned and few men left. Now I, I want to stop right here for a minute. Now I'm a, just a backwoods country boy that lives in North Carolina with virtually no education. And all I am doing is speaking out of the words of the Bible that you politicians, you lay your hand on and you swear on it. And yet, you stick your finger up at Jehovah by forcing sodomy and all kinds of wickedness on the innocent. This shall not stand and you will be rewarded for your wicked ways. Verse 7, the new wine mourns, the vine languishes, all the merry hearted do sigh. The mirth of tambret ceases, the noise of them to rejoice ends, the joy of the harp ceases. They shall not drink wine with a song. Strong drink shall be bitter to them that drink it. The city of confusion is broken down. Every house is shut up that no man may go in. Yes, yeah, so the cities are emptied. In the city is left desolation and the gate is smitten with destruction. When thus it shall be in the midst of the land among the people, there shall be as the shaking of an olive tree, as the gleaning of the grapes when the vintage is done. They shall lift up their voice. They shall sing for the majesty of the Lord. They shall cry aloud from the sea. Who is going to do this? The lost sheep of the house of Israel is going to do that. Verse 15. Wherefore, or why, do you glorify Jehovah in the fires, even the name of the Lord God of Israel in the coastlands of the sea. From the uttermost parts of the earth we have heard songs, even glory to the righteous. Yes. Then the children of, Eng the children of Israel shall sing to the Lord from afar, even while the fires are burning. But they will not be burned by the fires. You can read in Psalm it talks about this. But I said, his Isaiah speaking for himself, this dream is causing him great panic. But I said, my leanness, my leanness, woe unto me. The treacherous dealers have dealt treacherously. Yes, the de treacherous dealers have dealt very treacherously. Are you listening, Secretary of State? Are you listening, leaders of Europe? Why are you de dealing so treacherously? So now, because of this treachery, verse 17, Fear and the pit and the snare are upon you, O inhabitants of the earth. And it shall come to pass that he that flees from the noise of the fear shall fall into the pit, and he that comes out of the midst of the pit shall be taken in a snare. For the windows from on high are open, and the foundations of the earth do shake. We read about this shaking of the earth in Haggai 2, did we not? Verse 19, the earth is utterly broken down, the earth is clean dissolved, the earth is moved exceedingly. 
The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard, and shall be removed like a cottage, and the transgression thereof shall be heavy upon it, and it shall fall and not rise again. So civilization as we know it will cease to exist. Verse 21, And it shall come to pass in that day that Jehovah shall punish the host, which are the armies, of the high ones, the lofty ones, the great ones that are on high, and the kings of the earth that are upon the earth. And they, the kings of the earth, the rulers of the earth, the crooked politicians of the earth, shall be gathered together as prisoners are gathered into the pit, and shall be shut up in prison, and after many days they shall be visited." Verse 23, Then the moon shall be confounded, and the sun ashamed, when Jehovah, the Lord of hosts, shall reign in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem, and before Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob gloriously. As I said before, I do not want to see bloodshed, I do not want to see death. I'm one of the most tender-hearted humans on the face of this earth. Even though I'm a hunter and I kill the food that I eat, I love my fellow man. I do not like seeing pain and sorrow in the faces of little children, women, or even grown men. But those who do not heed the warning of Isaiah 2, those who do not comply, the world leaders, the nations of the earth that do not comply with Leviticus 25 and verse 8, will suffer Isaiah 24. It's just that simple. This needs to be done now. And I see that instead of complying, what we have here is we have this so-called thief conference. Yes, they say it's a peace conference, but I call it a thief conference. Where France is gathering up many, many nations of the world to plot against the Holy One of Israel, against the Holy Covenant. Instead of complying, they are rebelling. And then they are planning yet another conference this fall. An even bigger one. But let me warn all you nations of the earth. If you plot against Israel. You need to first. Go and look what happened to Venezuela. When Hugo Chavez cursed Israel. Three times. And they like a bunch of lap dogs shouted with agreement now Hugo Chavez is dead from cancer and the people of Venezuela are eating cats and dogs just to survive The nations of the world, if you follow in the footsteps of Hugo Chavez, you and your people will be subjected to the same curses that has fallen upon Venezuela. And you know, the people of Venezuela were eating good before this happened. They were doing well. 
living high off the oil. And then the curse came. Learn the lessons from others. Don't repeat them. Only a fool does that. But we know what, what the world is going to do, don't we? It always has to be the hard way. It can never be the easy way. Why? Why, oh why, would you subject me to this? Yes, I'm making it personal. I'm selfish. I don't want to be subjected to this. I don't want to see this. But you are forcing Jehovah's hand. You can't say you haven't been warned. This video goes all around the world. And those who choose not to listen to it, that's your choice. Once again, what do I know? I am just a country boy from the backwoods of North Carolina.